describe three facts about this graph, I see right away that it's increasing. Not bad. If I knew how to spell increase, increasing. That's supposed to be an S. That's supposed to be an ING. Uh, what else? It has the Y intercept is four. So we could say B is four. Uh, that's supposed to be a four. Let's find our slope while we're at it. Um, every time I go up and over, it's actually over by two. So when I go up, I'm going up one, two over one. So two over one is actually four over two. So the slope is four over two, which is also just regular old two. I could say the slope is called F. Whatever. Lots of things. The x-intercept is 2. Lots of things that we could say here. But uh, that's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking to it, and you can't stop me. All right. A chapter anew, and we will be able to uh, read and analyze scatter plots. Uh, why was this funny when I got this meme? I don't know. Not funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. And those data sets are over here and over here. It's bimodal, not by owner, bimodal. Uh, there's two different things going on. So let's just say that you have a company and throughout the course of two weeks, they decide that they're gonna take the temperature outside and they figure out how much money they make in sales depending on that temperature. And so, you know, one day it's a little under 12 degrees and they make about $200. And one day it's a little over 14 degrees and they make over $200. And they seem to say like, hmm, that's interesting. The warmer it gets, the more sales we make. I wonder if there's a way that we could take that information and use it somehow. That's what a scatter plot does. It takes two pieces of information it graphs it out so that you can make predictions of certain events and, and, and say relations between the two uh, data points. So again, it seems to me that the higher the temperature goes, the more money people make. And I went the wrong way. Uh, a positive correlation is when the data's behavior has a positive slope. So if it looks like my dots, and it's not going to be a perfect straight line. It's not always going to be a perfect straight line. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, it's never going to be a perfect straight line. But see how these dots are like close enough together that if I really wanted to, I can kind of put like a nice little line in the middle of it. Okay. That line that I created fits that data for the most part. Is it exact? No. But a scatter plot is not going to be exact. You're just looking to see what the points are doing. And if those points are going up and to the right, it's a positive correlation, just like a positive slope up and to the right. Even over here, it's worse. But it looks like for the most part, these dots are going up and to the right. And you might look at that guy and be like, well, what's that one doing? That's weird. Well, some points may not exactly fit in scatter plots. For example, this is um someone's height and weight and for the most part uh as somebody gets taller they start to weigh more okay and what this guy over here is you you got a pretty short fat person over here got a pretty short fat person and they don't seem to belong but everybody else it seems to be like well as they get taller they weigh more okay uh that's what's going on over here Positive correlation means you can draw a line that's going up and to the right. The, the closer the dots are together, the more linear it is or the stronger the correlation. So I would look at this and say, yeah, that's definitely a positive correlation because those dots are all pretty close to each other. And that's definitely up and to the right. But I would look at these and say, yeah, I mean, I guess it's going up and to the right, but those dots are not that close. And that dot over there is kind of screwing things up. And that would be considered a weak correlation. 
Well, if there's a positive correlation, there's definitely going to be a negative correlation. And a negative correlation is exactly what it sounds like. If your dots seem to be going down and to the right or have a negative slope, that would be a negative correlation. My relation between these two sets of uh, numbers is a uh, negative correlation. Okay. Um, so over here, these dots are definitely going down and to the right. Over here, these dots are definitely going down and to the right. Okay. So I, I have no clue what this is saying. Max distance to read sign. I have no clue what that's saying either. But maybe, maybe what this is saying, oh, okay. As people get older, they need to be closer to read things carefully. And that makes sense because people who are old, they have bad eyesight. And so this information goes down. Okay, this information definitely goes down. This is a strong correlation down here because all the dots are pretty close. And this is pretty strong too, but some people might say like, I, I don't know, that's not that strong. Look at that dot way out there and they're not near as close as these. Either way, you could definitely say that, yeah, these dots are definitely going down and to the right, definitely going down and to the right, so it's a negative correlation. Last but not least, there is the no correlation. And that's if there's no positive or negative slope. Now, notice how I didn't say you can't draw a line through it. You can draw a line through it. Look, look at this line right there. But see that slope? That slope's undefined because it goes up and down. Up and down is undefined. That's the worst line I've ever drawn in my entire life. So I'm just going to erase and pretend like I never did it. Okay. <clears throat> that slope is up and down. So that's no correlation. See these dots? These dots go down and back up. You can't have, and listen very carefully because this is always a trick problem on multiple choice tests. You can't have a positive and negative slope. You can't have both positive and negative. So this is a no correlation because you can't say, oh, it's definitely just a positive or it's definitely just a negative. You can't do that. This guy, I don't know where I'd even put a line through it. I can't put a line through it. This guy, I can't, the, the dots are literally everywhere. I can't put a line through that either. And this guy, the dots are definitely everywhere. So I can't put a line. So if you can't put a line that definitely has a positive or a negative slope on it, it's a no correlation. And more often than not, no correlations uh, are just dots everywhere. But sometimes they will be straight up and down. Sometimes they will be straight left and right. And sometimes they will be both, but you can't have both. So if I want to describe each correlation, all I have to do is look at the graph and determine, okay, is it a positive? Is it a negative? Is it a neither? What am I dealing with? See this one? This one has dots all over the place. There's no way I can draw a positive or a negative looking line through it. So that's a no. Look at this one. It looks like I should be able to draw a nice perfectly horizontal line through it. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. So what's my correlation? None. There is no correlation. If you can't make a positive or negative slope, there's no correlation. That's a positive line that I can draw through it. So that's a positive correlation. That's a negative line that I can draw through it. So that's a negative correlation, NEG for negative. That is pretty weak, but the lines are, the points are definitely going up and to the right. Not perfectly, not beautifully, but they're definitely going up and to the right. So that's a weak positive. Whereas this guy, is a strong positive. Whenever it says describe each correlation or describe the relationship between the data, it's asking you, is it a positive correlation? Is it a negative correlation? Or is it no correlation? Now, there are more ways to describe a scatter plot. Okay, and there's three words that we're going to use. One word is a cluster. A cluster is when a bunch of points are really close together. 
All right, so if I were to look at any of these guys, none of them has like a super obvious cluster, but over here, see how these points are like smushed together and there's a bunch of them? That's a cluster, okay? Lots of points that are close together. An outlier is a point that is really different from the others. So when we looked at the one guy where it was the height and weight, let's keep going back, let's keep going back. This guy right here, see how that's the height and the weight? And we could be like, yeah, it looks like as you get taller, you weigh more. But what about this guy over here? What's that guy doing? Well, that guy doesn't fit. He, he is the really short person who weighs a lot. So that doesn't fit. That's an outlier. Does that mean because of one person it should destroy everything? No. It's kind of like, you know, are we <laughs> back in um, the early 80s, the University of North Carolina would brag that their nursing program would make so much money when they got out of college. But what they didn't tell people is they had one nurse that ended up making uh, like over a billion dollars in their lifetime. And that nurse was called Michael Jordan. So, you know, not all nurses from UNC uh, make billions of dollars or millions of dollars. Just one of them did. And Michael Jordan happened to be the one guy who did it. A gap is if I have a graph and there's a space in between what's going on. Uh, I saw that back here when we did, oh, wrong way, when we did this problem here. Oh. So even though this ends up being a nice straight up and to the right line, there's a big chunk missing. OK, so if I were I don't see what these words say, but if I were to uh, weigh myself every year, my entire life uh, as a kid, I would weigh more as I got older. But let's just say I forgot to do it like when I was 12, 13 and 14. Does that mean it ruins everything? No, I'm still getting I'm still weighing more as I get older, but I just forgot a big chunk of data. That's a gap. OK, so we're going to look at clusters, which are points that are just kind of grouped together, an outlier, which is one point that just doesn't seem to belong, and a gap where there seems to be a big chunk missing where a line should be. So now that you've seen it, let's do it. Describe the relationship between the data. Identify any outliers, gaps, or clusters. The relationship that I have between the data is going to be, let me get a pen, is going to be a negative correlation. Okay. I'm just going to really abbreviate things because my computer is lagging so bad. So negative correlation. I see here that I have a gap. Oh my gosh. I'm ready to buy my own Chromebook. I see here that I have a gap. I see here that I have an outlier. Some people might say, would that right there be a cluster? Not really. That's only two dots really close to each other. So I don't think we have any 
clusters, but we definitely have a gap right here and we definitely have an outlier right here. Okay. Okay. Describe the relationship between the data. Identify any outliers, gaps, or clusters. Well, we have no correlation. Why? Because it's decreasing and then increasing. So I'll put no correlation. Let's go through our three options. And again, this is nonlinear. It's not a line, so there's no correlation to begin with. Do I have any outliers? Is there a point here that doesn't kind of follow along what's going on? No, they, they all are following along the same curve looking thing. Are there any gaps? As I move along the curve looking thing, is there like a big space missing? No. Are there any clusters? Is there a chunk of dots like really close together? No. So the only thing I really care about here is the fact that it's a no correlation. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Pretty easy. Describe the relationship between the data. Identify any outliers, gaps, or clusters. Um, I would argue that that is an outlier. Although, I don't know. I don't know. That's a big maybe. But if you on a test were to say, oh, uh, that's an outlier, I wouldn't say you're wrong. So I'm going to go with it. Maybe this area right here is a gap. And once again, there's no correlation. Because there's no line that I can draw that's going to make an obvious positive or negative slope that follows the dots. No clusters in any of these. I really didn't see any clusters in any of these. The scatter plot shows the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn produced by a farm over the last 10 years. Describe the relationship between the amount of rainfall and the amount of corn produced. All right, so what we have here is we have a positive correlation. But what we also have is a real life problem. So I want, I, I could say positive correlation, which I will write out. That's supposed to be an O. That's supposed to be an O again. I have a positive correlation. What I also have is a real life problem. So how am I going to describe what's going on? Well, if both sides are going up and to the right, we can say as rainfall increases, the bushels of corn increases. So let's say that as, this is going to be fun considering nothing seems to be writing well, as rainfall, <laughs> uh, Ah, this looks so bad. Increases. Increase. I'm writing as slow as I can, and this is the best that's coming out. As rainfall increases, increases. I swear my handwriting's not this bad. Bushels of corn increases. Bushels. I'm just going to write normally and see what happens. Bushels of corn increases. That is the word increases. That's how laggy my computer is right now. Time to get a new computer. All right. Ooh, another video.
I probably won't be able to make it over until around 4 p.m. today at the earliest period. Since it's Christmas, comma, I'll just take what you guys have now and we'll add the rest on to next month and we'll worry. We won't worry about a late fee, period. Will someone be home at around 4? Or should I come later, question mark? So that was called the line of best fit. I call it the line of best fit. Your book doesn't call it a line of best fit yet. They call it a line of fit. Now, in the next lesson, you will call it the line of best fit. There's really no difference between the two. And I don't know why the book has to give it different names, but I'm going to call it the line of best fit every time. So if for now you're like, but, but, but the book says, well, I don't care what the book says. And stop stuttering like that. Jeez. The scatter plot shows the total earning wages and tips of a food server during one day. About how many hours must the server work to earn $70? All right, we got dollars over here. We have hours over here. Here's $70. Let me draw a line of fit or a line of best fit. Again, a line of fit is a line that you draw that seems to go through as many dots as you can or goes through the middle of those dots. And like I said in the video, it's not an exact science. You're just looking for a line that seems to be right in the middle of everything. All right. So if I were to say $70, okay, here's my 70. I'm going to go over until I hit my, hit my red line. Boom. There it is. My red line is right here in between three and four. So about how many hours must a server work to earn $70? I'm going to say 3.5. Now, if this was a test or if this was like an open-ended thing, or if you were working on this in a regular classroom and you said three and your best friend said four and Mr. Parrott says 3.5, who's right, who's wrong? None of us are. You're not looking for an exact amount. And the way you know you're not looking for an exact amount is that word about, which means you're not looking for perfection. If you were to say three, great. If you were to say four, great. If you were to say like 3.2, 3.7, I said 3.5 because that's what my line looks like it should be. But my line's not perfect. I mean, look how squiggly it is. You're just looking for that general area. Now, if you were to say something like five hours or six hours or one or two hours, then you're definitely wrong. About how much does this server earn for five hours of work? So here's my five hours right here. My five hours actually hits a blue dot. And that blue dot is in between 80 and what would be 90. So I'm going to say $85. Describe the relationship shown in the data. I'm going to put PC for positive correlation, if it even lets me draw the rest of the P. PC for positive correlation. But if I were to use better words, I would say as the hours worked increases, the food server makes more money or the earnings increase. Basically, the more hours this person works, the more money they make. You're not looking for a perfect word or a perfect sentence. You're looking for describing it. The scatter plot shows the number of drifting scooters sold by a company. All right. So in what year were a thousand scooters sold? So let's go number sold year. Okay. A thousand matches up with 2014. About how many scooters were sold in 2015? So let's go to our years. 2000, that's 16. So 2015 is going to be in between 2014 and 2016. Let's go up. And it's not quite 1,000. So 900 would be here. It's closer to 1,000. So I'll say 950. 
And again, you should realize by the sound of my voice that we're not looking for an exact number. If you put 960, if you put 920 or whatever, that's fine. Describe the relationship shown by the data. Well, that's a negative correlation. As the years go on, as the years go on, the number of scooters sold will be less. It decreases. As the years increase, the number decreases. Assuming this trend continues, in what year are we about 50, uh, 500 scooters? So let's draw a line. We haven't done that yet. I'd say that would be a pretty decent line. So 500 it lives in between 400 and 600. So 500 would be like right around here. What year is that? 2016, 2017, 2018. Perfect, perfect. Draw a sketch, draw a sketch, nice. Scatter plot comparing a child's age and height is what I was supposed to say. All right, so we got, oh my gosh. We've got, age, height and as a kid gets older they're going to get taller what correlation is it positive <laughs> this is the worst uh all right